Hello everyone. I am here with a knife that I've had on my radar for a little while. Uh, not for any special reason. Basically two things. Uh, I've seen that it's come down in price lately. And number two, it kind of has a cleaver blade. So I tend to really like cleaver blades. And um, I like good deals. So there we go. I think we already know I'm cheap by this point in time. But anyway, this knife that I have in front of you is the Gerber Flat Iron. I kind of like this knife because... It's um, it's kind of chunky and burly. I know people tend to like things that are very, very lightweight. Like, you know, some people like the Benchmade Bug Out because it's so lightweight. And to me, it just kind of looks flimsy. But anyway, this thing right here has an MSRP of $75. That's insane. Uh, if you go on Amazon, it's like $45. Currently, it's about $45. I would expect that price to drop. That's why I probably will throw an Amazon link in there. But if you see that the price has dropped to like 20 or 25 you might want to buy it. Don't pay $45 for this thing, though. But anyway, that's another story. Blade HQ has them for about $20 to $23. Uh, that's more like it. Now, this particular one, because there's, there's different uh, varieties of it, but I'll give you some general information. It's about uh, 5 inches long, you know, closed, 5 inches long. has a 3.5 inch blade, 3-inch cutting surface, and it weighs five and a half ounces, which is pretty good weight. It is it is pretty hefty. Uh, it is a frame lock. It has stainless steel liners. And uh, this particular one has um, aluminum scales. I paid $29 for this on sale. It was regular $45. paid $29 because it also came with a multi-tool, which I will cover in a future video. So I felt like $29 wasn't bad because I was getting it the same day for $29. And if I had got it at, say, Blade HQ, this would have been like $23.99. And then I would have had to pay like $4.50 for shipping, wait six days. So like that extra dollar, it was, you know, kind of worth it to me. Plus I got the multi-tool. So in that regard, I kind of got the multi-tool for free. So not bad. You might notice it has that little hole here, too, that you can you know, maybe flick it with. I'm going to tell you right now, you cannot flick th this thing. The, the action is not good enough for you to do that. But you can use it to open. So, um, those were kind of basics I gave you. Uh, I find that the ergonomics on the handle are pretty good. You can get your entire hand on this handle. Uh, no problem at all. Uh, the choil right here is a very nice size, as you can see. So, you can very easily get your finger in there. And it's a very deep choil. So, as you can see, when you're getting ready to cut, you can really choke up nicely. So, I like that. As far as the blade steel goes, it is made of the mighty, mighty, mighty Chinese-made 7CR13MOV. Yeah, that's right. Now, as you know, that steel will dull more quickly than some other steels. On the bright side, you could probably strop that thing back to life uh, with so much difficulty because, like I said, it's not the most durable steel, but again... You know, I paid 30 for this, 29 actually, with a multi-tool. In other places, you could probably get it for 20 And if you keep sitting around, maybe you'll see clearance going even lower than that. Um, so, like I said, please be aware. And again, we have this, uh, um, this lock bar right here. It is a frame lock, stainless steel liners. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is it has this itty-bitty, teeny-tiny clip. Uh, I'm thinking maybe not to interfere with the frame lock mechanism. I will tell you that you need the jaws of life to get this clip open to put it over your pocket. I'm telling you, I it, it's it's something to behold. Um, now I would normally say, well, it's a pain in the neck to get on your your pants pocket, but at least it'll hold, and it might really hold super well. The only thing is, it is so small. Um, I would say from this part to this part, if we hold it over there, it's probably slightly under an inch from the high point here to the high point here. I don't feel really good having just that amount of space holding on to the pocket clip. Now, granted, it's in my pocket, so if it folds off, it'll probably land in my pocket. But I just want to bring that up, that it's probably competing for the title of world's smallest pocket knife clip. Just wanted you to know. Now, if you are the kind of person who's very interested in uh, knife action and flickability, 
yeah, you're, you're not going to flick this thing. Now, you might say, wow, that looks pathetic. Uh, that is a humongous improvement over when I first got the knife. Uh, I've been, like, opening and closing it and, you know, trying to practice and flipping and everything. Uh, it's not going. It's just not that kind of knife. It doesn't have that kind of action. Um, you know, if you pick up, like, a Kaiser Sheepdog or something like that, you can flip something like that. Um, you can't flip this. Now, with that said, it's gotten better. And uh, I am going to put uh, just a little bit of oil on the pivot. And I think that'll help it a little bit. And I think that will improve it. And I think that from the amount of improvement it's gotten from when I first opened it and started using it to now, it has improved. And I think the oil will improve it. And I think continue use will improve it. But I do never see this as being a, a knife with fantastic action. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, if you want that kind of knife, this isn't the one for you. Now, um, about the knife blade itself, there's something I really, really like about the blade and something I don't like at all. Now, you'll see that we have the cleaver blade. I like that it's thick. It is a 0.15 inch blade stock. Most knives you see are around 0.11 to 0.12. This is 0.15. As a matter of fact, when I saw how thick this thing was... I'm like, I got to check this out, and it was 0.15. That is a big thing with me. If I was a knife designer and I was making a knife like this, I'd want a thick blade stock. And honestly, 0.15 would be about where I would start. Um, now, you'd think that this heavy blade, heavy thick blade stock uh, would help it close a little bit better. You know, it would have some, some, you know, gravity would help it close, but I'm sorry I'm just zoomed in so much, but... Yeah, like, it's it's kind of tough. Like, you shake it and it doesn't go in. Whereas, again, like with my Kaiser and with my Civivi, those just fall right down. Thank you, gravity. Now, I do, like I said, that blade stock. What I don't like is no jimping. You know I like jimping. Now, we have the choil here. Now, picture this. You choke up on the choil. Why isn't there jimping in here? Look at that. There's no jimping. It's perfectly, perfectly flat. I would, if it were me, I would have put some jimping starting right around here, and then because of the, the choil, I probably would have put it up through here. Something. I'm not saying it has to be the world's greatest jimping, the deepest jimping, the biggest jimping, but something. I think it would be good. I would put that in there. Uh, as far as the, the uh, scales go, I like this color quite a bit. Uh, it's actually a little bit darker in person than it appears on the... Uh, on the screen, it looks brighter on, on the camera. Um, but it's nice. I like it. Uh, don't know how durable it's going to be, but it looks cool now. Like I said, I, I would consider this like a first impressions video. It's not like I've been doing any heavy use, just very light use, and not for that long a time, actually, either. Um, but, you know, it's pretty cool. Um, with that said, there is not good traction on that at all. Um, if your hand's a little wet or, or something gets on it, I can picture it being slick. Actually, the back actually has a little is a little slightly more grippy than this, and this isn't grippy at all. But this is actually just kind of smooth, to be honest with you. But it looks good. So, like I said, just to just to recap, um, three and a half inch long blade, uh, three inch cutting area, very comfortable choil, five inch body. Weighs uh, almost five and a half ounces, 7CR13 MOV steel, 0.15 inch blade stock. Uh, the handle, I believe, is like 0.43 uh, inches thick, if I remember correctly. Not bad. Uh, and the frame lock. Now, I did encounter a problem with this, which almost made me want to take it back. And the problem was that uh, the frame lock would... Um, Deploy perfectly, so you open the knife, and all of a sudden you see that locking bar just scooting right on over under the blade to lock it. It was great, and I must say, lockup on this knife was very, very good, side to side, front to back. No wiggle room at all in this, which isn't surprising because look, the action kind of sucks on it. So, you know, that's probably how they they get it to lock up so tight. But anyway, um. On a few occasions, it was very difficult for me to disengage the frame lock. I was unable to push the lock over, the locking bar over, to bring the blade down. Let me repeat that. The knife opened, 
the locking bar went under the blade to immobilize the blade and lock it in place, and then I could not unlock the knife. So, I was thinking, yeah, I think I'm going to end up taking this back. But actually, after that, it, I kind of break in period. It hasn't happened. So, I'm going to kind of handle it a little bit more, make sure it doesn't happen anymore. But I will end up keeping it. Um, I do like it, and uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know I do like cleaver-type knives. Now, this one's a little slimmer in profile than what I would typically like. Um, for me, the uh, the standard for, for cleaver-style knives is absolutely the Corvid, the con uh, Concept Corvid. I love that knife. It's just insane. Um, this is a little more refined than something like that, and I don't consider myself the most refined person sometimes, so... Uh, you know, it, I don't like it as much as those, but it, it's a cool knife. But uh, to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't pay over like $23, $24 for this. Uh, if you run into it, I think they have it at Walmart. If you run into it at Walmart and you're just looking for something new to pick up, it's not a bad purchase. Um, just keep practicing with it a little bit. And I say practice. I should even say practice. You know how to open a knife. But um, just check it out repeatedly for a little while before you throw the packaging away to make sure you don't have one with an issue. Uh, with the lockup. Um, as a matter of fact, after I'm done with this, I am probably going to oil the pivot a little bit, and I think that will help the action quite a bit, and then maybe the lock bar situation. But like I said, for what it is, it's a pretty good knife. Um, I see a lot of really, really, really crappy knives now that are selling for, you know, 15 to $20, and this is way better than a lot of those knives, way better. So, like I said, twenty dollar range. I think it's an it's a good buy. I wouldn't say it's an excellent buy. I think it's a good buy. If you go up a few dollars more for this for the aluminum, I think it's a good buy. But really, don't spend more than that. Absolutely not. Um, so that's what I leave you with today. I hope you have a good one. Keep checking back for more content. I appreciate your viewership. See you later.